the greatest and best gunpla ever created? It might just be. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla Review and today I'm taking a look at something that, to me, is the most fun model kit I have built in a long, long time. This thing is awesome. Of course, this right here is the Haropra Mobile Haro. There's been a bunch of Haropla before, I wasn't really all that interested, they're just little balls, but this one right here, this looked awesome and I'm telling you right now, it is awesome. But anyway, if you do want one of these of your own, there's a link down there in the description. As usual, you can get one of your own from those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. But anyway, let's get to the review. So first off, here is a brief overview of everything that comes in the box. That is the badass mobile haro itself, the little base and arms which you normally get with a mobile haro. But of course, first off, we're going to be taking a look at the model kit itself. And all I can say is this little guy right here is awesome. Absolutely awesome. This right here is an extremely unique design. Of course, it is just a standard Haro inside of this cool little suit. According to the box right here, this is from Gundam Build Divers, but as far as I know, it wasn't in the show. But then again, I did fast forward through the majority of that just to see the fight scene, so I could be wrong. But anyway, if you know, drop it down in the comments. Was it there? Was it not? Is it just a mascot? All in all, this little design right here is so awesome. Once again, it is just that standard Haropla that we would have seen before on popping that little section open. He just pops out just like that, same as what we would have seen. And this does make it quite similar to this right here, the Momo Kapool. So like we saw before with that, we do, oh no. Like we saw before, we do have a little Harrow inside of there. But this has absolutely nothing on this right here. This is an absolutely awesome little kit. In general, this just comes in three colors. That is this almost purpley gray that's in a matte color, the greenish gray which makes up the majority of the armor, and the white of the Haro in there. But all in all, the detailing on this is really nice. We've got a lot of rivets, it's got exhaust pipes in the back, and on top of that we've got a lot of 3mm holes in this, which of course is for using with the standard 3mm peg that you get on most Gunpla. That is for other Gunpla's accessories and parts, and we'll take a look at that later on. One of the most awesome aspects about this kit, without a doubt. Size-wise, it seems like this kit is non-scale. For example, there's a general size of a Haro from the anime, there is a high grade, there is a master grade, so you can see that it doesn't really fall into any particular scale of sorts. But the best way to put it is, it is compatible with 144th scale high grade stuff. That's probably the best way to put it. And speaking of stuff, there is the kit with everything that it comes with. This, in essence, is a bare bones kit. This is your standard Haro plaque kit with that mobile Haro armor. Nothing really extra in here. As for that Haro, when that is popped out, it can be used with this jigsaw piece shaped base just by putting it into this little ring section here like so. I will also mention that there is this little flat piece of plastic here on there. That's just there for storage and that can be used on the bottom of the Haro here to cover up that hole. Just like with all other Haro plaque kits, we have a set of arms and legs in here which can be used with it. Once they're attached and they attach like so, this can be used with this little adapter to attach it onto that jigsaw piece base. But seriously, nobody cares about that. This is what we're talking about. So when in mobile Haro mode, this kit is rocking no accessories besides its aura of absolute awesome awesomeness. On the box, it does show it with some alternate hands, but of course, these are the sold separately build hands. So all he's got is his standard fists, but the great thing about this is it does rock the standard ball joints. So even if you don't have the build hands, you can just use the hands of other kits like other build divers kits. But I will mention because the build divers line is a little bit on the odd side, it takes from a bunch of different lines of kits for basis for those kits. So not every hand will attach on here. But if you do have a few high grades lying around, you will probably find something. And even the weapons from Bandai's Full Metal Panic kits fit as well. A little bit loose, but they do hold in place. I will mention that this kit right here is absolutely and utterly awesome. I will be reviewing that very soon. So if you want your Haro with some badass weaponry, those are great kits to choose from. There is no denying though that those hands can look a little bit on the small side. So again, the best option probably is the build hands. So just some examples of what it will look like with the build hands. There, 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 and there. These look like they're made for the mobile Haro. These look great. 
Definitely a recommended extra right here. Well, if you can get over the slight color difference, that is. So once again, I will mention that one of this kit's key features is the fact that it is absolutely covered in these three millimeter holes, which means this is extremely customizable. It's also worth noting that under these chest sections here, when you pop those open, under both of those we've got not two, but four three millimeter holes. So again, lots of options on here. Let's try some things out. So a lot of build custom kits come with these particular arm sections here. So if you want to put some weaponry around on the back, this is a great option. And using that, we have Haro rocking the binder gun. That is the build custom binder gun as a shoulder cannon. So pretty cool. So this right here is one of my all time favorite build divers accessories. Of course, that is the tilt rotor pack on top, as well as the backpack from the Grimoire Red Beret. So let's try this out. So popping off the backpack there, and we can see that this kit has the standard two point adapter, which means it will be compatible with most backpacks, thankfully. And if not, you may have had the two to one backpack adapter that comes with some other kits, but this kit does have a bit of an outcrop here for the hinge, which may be a little bit of an issue. Let's try attaching this on anyway. So here we go. And it does kind of get blocked a little bit, but it does attach. So that right there is what the Haro looks like with the tilt rotor on, and that is pretty fun. That is awesome, especially if it was painted up to match him. That's cool. This is automatically giving me a long range vibe, so I'm wondering if the system weapons can be used with this. Let's try one out. As far as I'm concerned, this right here is one of the coolest 144th scale weapons to ever exist in Gunpla, and this is the System Weapon 004 Sniper Rifle. This thing is massive, this thing is awesome, and it makes me lament the fact that the system weapons aren't being made anymore. They were so cool. Real, grade quality, and they're sick as hell. The big question now, does it fit? Yes, although a little bit loosely like some things we've seen before, but that shouldn't be a problem considering this is held at an angle. Let's move that around into the other hand for support. And there we have it, ultimate death from above. That is so awesome. Seriously. I wish they were still making these system weapons, they're so cool. And speaking of system weapons, let's try him out with one more. This should fit perfectly on here, and yes it does. And there is Haro rocking a deadly claw shield. I can't remember off the top of my head which system weapon this one is. So if you do know, drop it down in the comments to let everyone know. But seriously, all in all, this looks awesome. But what if you don't have any system weapons or build custom kits? Let's try it out with some stuff that comes with standard high-grade Gunpla. So like I mentioned already, what if you do not have all these optional kits like the system weapons, the build custom packs, all of that? Well, if you do have some, and I mean any high grades lying around, you're gonna find something that will work with this. Most of the time the holding hands will fit, and a lot of the pegs are exactly the same, usually the same old 3mm. So here it is side by side with the reversible Gundam. Just pull off some parts here, then you've got this absolutely awesome arm and pistol combo. Using this section from the chest of the Haro right here, I attach that onto the arm, and there you go. There's that pistol, prehensile arm, awesome combo attached onto the Haro's arm. Just picking another Gundam at random, and here is the amazing Black Warrior. This kit comes with some crazy weaponry. Really cool weaponry. So let's pull out that backpack, see if it's compatible. Looks like it is. It's the same two peg one as the Haro right here. Stick that on. And finally, there is Haro rocking those weapons. And that is some serious firepower right there. That looks so cool. What do you mean? That's not enough firepower. Well, let's add more. So borrowing this right here from the Cheddar Cheese Master, stealing just the end of it here. Sadly, this right here does not have a peg in the end of it, so we're gonna have to do a bit of a modification here. This little piece I have here is left over from a build custom kit. I'm gonna take just the peg from that like so. Pop that right there into the end of that. Now it has a peg. Stick that in there. And now we've got some chest cannons. Still not enough? Okay, so now I'm starting to miss the tilt rotor pack. So I'm gonna take this off, put on the tilt rotor, using another adapter, I'm gonna stick this onto the side just so we don't lose that. And of course, using the tilt rotor means, of course, chainsaws. Still not enough? Okay, Gundam the Origin shoulder cannon. Needs more? The binder gun, Galbaldi Rebex cannon, Transient Gundam Glacier's Glaive, a bigger, better action base because it's getting too heavy, for protection, Gyan's Missile Shield, Shining Gundam's Fists, Moon Gundam's Psycho Plate, that shield again, and some missiles. 
And finally there it is, the full armor Haro Ver Mecha in all of its glory. I have to say, the only thing I was surprised about through the whole ordeal of sticking everything on here is that it didn't fall apart. So there's one thing I'll say about this kit, it is solid and strong, the build is great. Simplicity at its best. This thing is awesome. So finally, let's move quite quickly through the articulation. It's pretty simple, but very, very effective. First off, as for the head, we've only got side to side because the ball joint inside of here is attached onto a peg like so. So that means it does stop it from looking down and up, but you could trade that stability for the up and down by snipping that peg off in there. At the shoulder then, we've got full rotation all the way up. Full rotation here at the upper arm, that pretty much perfect bend at the elbow. And as for the hand, that is just your standard ball and socket. At the waist, the mobile Haro is rocking that full rotation there. While we're around on the back, this one vernier can move around like so on a ball joint. So yeah, full rotation at the waist. It's also worth noticing that that waist is directly connected to the head, so the head does spin with that, but can spin independently as well. At the waist here, we've got pretty much the full rotation just blocked by the body. So from there, all the way up to there. This joint right here is nearly exactly the same as the shoulder, so that means it does throw the leg up to the side just like that, all the way up. We have independent rotation at the upper leg, is the bend at the knee, and all of these joints are quite stiff, which is a good thing, a really good thing. They're stiff in the good way. As for the ankle, that is your standard ball and socket. You do get quite a bit out of that. It's quite free. And it is worth noting as well that the bottom of this is completely hollow. This may bother some people, but it's a simple little kit and doesn't bother me in the least. All in all, the articulation on this guy is quite good and it's surprisingly dynamic for something that does look quite simple and in general the torso doesn't do a whole lot. But in the end, you get a lot out of this and this guy's awesome. So that is it for the review, and all I can say is I absolutely and utterly love this kit. Gundarium tier through and through. Sure, it may not be like the Sazabi or the Moon Gundam, or any of those kits I would have mentioned being Gundarium tier before, but this is just so perfect in its simplicity. If you're ranking this against the other Haros, definitely Gundarium. But it's just the fun aspect of this that makes it so damn cool. This is what Gunpla is all about in the end. Some kits get a little too over the top with what come in the box, what they can do. This is simple, has great articulation, the build strength is fantastic and is compatible with so many things across the Gunpla range. When it comes to Gunpla and mascot characters, I have never seen anything as good as this. It's just perfect in what it is. I love it. I absolutely and utterly love this kit. And it is up there, right up there with my favorite kits. But anyway, if you do want one of your own, there is a link down there in the description. You can grab one at Hobby Link Japan. As usual, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time.